All right. Hey, it is so good to see you all here today in this room. I just love the fact that we are back. This is week two for us. And for some of you, it's week one. This is your first time here. I'm curious. How many of you in the room? First time. First time that you've come back. Yes, we're so glad that you're here. Most of us we know are online. It's going to continue to be that way. Hundreds, in fact, are online. So, so much of what we're doing in this room is really, in so many ways, targeted in in different ways towards you who are not yet here. But we're so glad to be back. And I'm excited about this message today. I have a message for the entire family. So this message is coming not only in this room, uh, not only across the the internets, the global worldwide internets, but it's also going to be coming to the sanctuary for our whole church family to hear because this is a message I want everyone to hear. We don't always do this live back and forth. I was live from the sanctuary to here last week. Now we're going that way. Uh, we've got Travis Cook stepping up and others, Rolando, our teaching team, helping us. But today I have a message for everybody in, in, uh, in who's hearing this message right here, hear my voice. We want to continue to follow the guidelines. We're doing that. For those of you who are not yet here, following careful guidelines, uh, we're seeking to be a caring, loving church, have sought to be that and do that throughout this entire time. And uh, so... You know, we're wearing masks throughout our entire time here. And I'll say it again. This is not, you know, it's not your school. I hope that's going well. Uh, this is not your business. This is not your home even. Though we're a family. This is a church. And so we're, we're really seeking to, to protect and, and guard uh, every person here. And so we want to just be, you know, follow the way of Jesus. And guests who are watching right now, many of you, hundreds uh, of folks who are watching, perhaps many of you are guests. We, get, we have guests every week. And we want to say this. Some of you may wonder, what kind of church is this? Maybe you've never been here before. You may wonder, with all that's happening in our culture these days, all the things that are dividing people, making people kind of crazy, we live in this, this culture of outrage, you may wonder, what kind of church is this? What do you guys stand for? You know, are you, uh, so often, are you a con- conservative church? Are you, are you a progressive church? Are you a Republican, Democrat? Are you, a, are, are you an old church, a young church? Are, are you a progressive church? Are you a modern church? Are you a traditional church? Are you a black, white, Hispanic, Asian church? Yes, 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 and yes. We're all of those things because, listen, there's only one thing. There's one person who unites us, and his name is Jesus. Amen. We're all about Jesus here. So anything that would seek to divide others doesn't divide us here because we're all about Jesus, and so everything else pales in comparison. And so we love one another even, yes, with different opinions and all that kind of stuff. We're seeking to show the world what it's like to actually have different opinions and still love each other. We need this so desperately in our day. So this whole series on the fruit of the Spirit is how we're seeking to to do this. Now, I I asked a question last week. I'm going to ask it again this week. Uh, What is it that you need more than anything else in your life right now? Now, last week we talked about joy. Remember, love, joy. Now we're on to what? Peace, right? And I would guess that most of us here and most of you hearing me right now, you would say, can I, I see this as a pastor, when I'm talking to people, when I'm praying with people, Pastor, would you pray with me about this? I'm dealing with this. The thing that I see more than anything else in the world uh, is that people need, in a word, peace. Now, it comes in different forms and different ways, but we all need peace. And I'm guessing that you need peace today in your life. I know I need more peace. I desire to have more peace, to live in peace all the time. Now, I want you to go ahead and grab your Bible, and, and I'll guide you there in a moment. But grab your Bible and turn uh, to the book of John. We'll, we'll get there in a moment. We're going to be John 14, ultimately. But while you're turning there, I want you to know that you ha- we have a QR code there. You can see it. We'll leave it on the screen for a moment here in this room and there online, wherever you're watching. You can pull out your phone, and uh, you don't have to take a picture. Just put it up there, photo. And it'll go to um, lots of great resources we have. We're building around every sermon to help you Uh, as you follow Jesus every day, and groups that are around these particular questions. You can use this in your uh, devotional time. You can use it throughout the week to unpack this sermon, to apply it, because check it out. The only thing we want to do here, glorify God, bring his word, and apply it to our lives. Apart from application, you've wasted your time. Listen to this message. And so we all want to guide. Here's the thing. We're not simply wanting people to get back to church. That's a good thing. Get back together. We want to make disciples. So we've got great resources for you there, and you can look at it throughout the week. Now, my great prayer for us uh, as a church family can be summed up in 2 Thessalonians 3.16. This is our memory verse 
for the week. We're memorizing verses along with each of these fruit. And I love this one. I love this one. We can all say it together. I think it's on the screen there. Let's, let's say it together. If you haven't memorized it, it's, it goes like this. Now, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. It's like a benediction, right? It's like a blessing over you today. Now, did you see what it says? It says, at all times, in every way. I wonder if you believe that the Lord can really give you peace at all times and in every way. Today we're going to talk about this, but I want you to do this. We've already prompted you to think about that thing. Maybe it's something that's really stressing you out right now. I mean, to put it that way. Something that, that's, that's a barrier to peace in your life right now. And I want you to do this for me. I want you to think about that, that thing that's bringing stress into your life. Uh, I want you to think about what really has you burdened right now. And you're not making it up. I mean, this is real stuff that really is burdening you right now. It's weighing you down. And I want you to do this. I want you to apply a little stress test, okay? There's a lot of ways to measure anxiety. There's this an old, old one that's a Hamilton rating anxiety scale. Um, this one, this is called the Warren scale, okay? It's just five, 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 uh, five you know, levels, all right? And I want you to do this. Just close your eyes wherever you are. Close your eyes right now at home. Close your eyes right here. Uh, now, this makes some of you all anxious right now. You're a little nervous. Um, with your eyes closed, I want you to hold your hand up. I want you to hold your hand. Everybody just hold up, let's say right hand, whatever hand you are. And I want you to put a number to your stress level right now. I mean, in this season in your life. And I want you to, like, one is not so much. Um, you know, five would be like DEFCON five. I am, I've got a lot on me right now. Somewhere there, put a number up there. Could just say, Lord, here I am. And now you can put your, put your hand down, okay, open your eyes. And here's what I want us to do. This, this is kind of amazing. You, you'll be surprised, but your pastor can actually read your mind. I know that your stress, your anxiety in your life was one of about five things. It's been noted, about four or five things. One is uh, it's either a pace, it, it's, it's a place, or, or it's a pain or a problem or, if I haven't gotten there yet, it's a person, all right? Or people, perhaps. It's one of those things. It's a place, that is to say, it's a pace. You have too much going on in your life. We talk a lot about this. And it may be, very well be, a pace that you need to change in your life. Uh, you, you, know, you need to slow down. Maybe it's a place. It's a place, maybe it's a place you're pursuing. Maybe it's a, place, a literal place. Like whenever you go there, find yourself there, you're stressed. It brings anxiety in your life. Maybe it's a position. It's a promotion. It's a place you want to be that's creating all kinds of stress and pain in your life. Some of you are stre- some of us are anxious about going any place these days, right? Some of us are a little anxious being here in this place. But it's, it may be a place. It, it may be a pain. And I mean like a real literal pain. Some of us are walking through physical pain right now. Maybe it's mental pain and anguish. We've talked a lot about mental health challenges and anxiety and depression. Maybe it's a pain. Maybe it's a problem that you're trying to, to settle. It's a dilemma you, that you're trying to fix. You're trying to solve an ongoing problem, perhaps. Or maybe it's a person, a person in your life or people in your life. You love them, perhaps. Maybe it's somebody you don't like so much, but maybe it's someone in your family, but it's creating a lot of anxiety and, and stress in your life. It's, it's one of these things. Now, in the end, the Bible says that the things that really drive us to, to, to anxiety and worry and, and all of these things, really in a word, is, is sin. I mean, underneath it all, not, not that all things that we struggle with is sin, but we live in a fallen world, and we're a broken people, and, and there's coming a day when we're not going to experience all that's going on in this world. But I just want you to see that, see, some of us think, man, if I could just, uh, you know, if I could fix that person, Right? If I could achieve a certain pace, if I, could, if I could just settle that place, if I could get rid of that pain or fix that problem, fix that person, then my life would be perfect. And here's the problem for many of us. The barrier to your peace is perfection. You think that somehow if I could fix that person, all things would be perfect. I could fix that. I've been, no, everything would be perfect. I could make more money. Everything would be perfect. If I got that job, everything would be perfect. Here's the problem. If everything else in your life all of a sudden got perfect, you still have a problem. 
because you're not. You'll never be perfect. And some of us, the challenge for us is, is we want everything around us to be perfect. And by the way, it's probably dry. You're the one that others are thinking about. Okay? You're creating anxiety and worry in their lives. Peace is not found in the fixing. Peace is found, we're going to see here, not in fixing everything around us. Peace is found ultimately in a person. And I want us to unpack this. Peace is not a pace to achieve. All right? Peace is not a place to be. It's not a pain to erase. It's not a problem to solve. It's not a person to fix. Peace instead is found in Christ. Now watch what Jesus said. Look at this. John 16, 13 says this. I have said these things to you. Okay, many things that he has said. This is that final discourse. We're going to get to John 14 in a moment. He says that in me, you may have peace. Watch this. In me, you may have peace. In the world, you have tribulation. You're going to have trouble, but take heart. Okay, take courage. Be of courage. I have overcome the world. Now, you and I need peace in our lives, and the Lord is promising that he gives it. So you come to the right place today to think about what it is to receive his peace. And then how can we be agents of peace in an anxious system, in an anxious world today? What is the pathway to peace? Well, we've said that it's going to be like all of these fruit of the Spirit. It's going to be of the Spirit. We receive it in our spirit from him. And it's fruit that comes out of a relationship with him. So Galatians 5, 22, 23 says this. And I want us to say it all together. This is our theme verse that we've memorized together. All right? If you know it, you can close your eyes and do it. All right? All right? Let's, let's do it together. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. This is freedom, to live like this. So look at John 14. If you're not there, turn to John 14. We're going to begin with verse 25 uh, through 31. And while you've, you're getting there, uh, we've noted that uh, we've assigned real fruit, right, to each of the fruit. And today, we, you can see we've got the peach. Now, this one you can remember easily. Remember we talked about love's watermelon. We talked last week about joy is the orange. And this week is the peach. Now, peach is easy to remember because it's just one letter in English off of peace, right? So you remember this one. And the peach, here's the cool thing about the peach. You know that the peach is, ooh, it's nice and cool and soft. It has kind of that downy skin on it, right? And it's been said that the skin is so thin that the, that the downy hair on it, we call it peach fuzz, right? If it shows up on us or on a baby or something, peach fuzz, because what, what it is, it, they say that it, water bounces off of it, okay? It also, um, kind of this uh, bacteria doesn't, doesn't go into the, into the skin of the peach. It's kind of an amazing thing. Now, I cut this one open because I'm going to see something. This is incredible. When you open this up, you know that inside the soft peach is this hard, ultimately dried up hard pit, right? Now, you may not know, which I didn't know, this thing dries up, you cut it open, there's actually a seed inside the pit. And it looks like an almond. The seed to another peach tree put in the ground, bam, that grows up to be this peach tree producing hundreds of peaches is in this little pit right here. So in the center of the soft peach is the pit, the hard rock, which is the pit, and inside that is the seed, all right? So stretch the analogy a little bit, but the seed, okay, here's where we're going. Seed of faith, God gives us the rock, the solid rock of Jesus now in us, living in us, his spirit guiding us. Whatever comes our way in life, we've got this grace of God from the inside out, strength to face whatever comes our way. This is peace. And so look at what he says here. We're going to talk about peace, which is grace from the inside out. In verse 25, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, and this is his last night on the planet. He's going through, again, the final discourse, the farewell discourse, it's called. He says here in verse 25, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. All right, now I want you to see this. The solution to your lack of peace is first 
It's not a pace to achieve. It's a person to believe. The Holy Spirit is a person who comes to us. Jesus says that he's going to bring the Spirit. It's going to come, all right? So the Spirit of God comes into our lives when we receive Christ. This is only for those who've received him by faith. The Spirit of God comes into our lives. And maybe you, again, maybe you need a different pace in your life. But ultimately, I hear this a lot from a lot of people. Jeff, when things settle down, things are going to be okay in my life. I hear, you know, from a young, uh, maybe a young parent. Hey, when things settle down, all the while while neglecting their family. I, I hear it from middle-aged types who are, who are leaning towards retirement, trying to build retirement. When things settle down, I, I'll be more focused on my marriage or on my things that are really matter. People getting close to retirement. Hey, when things settle down, I'm really going to you know, really focus in, do that ministry thing I was going to do, really serve some when things settle down. You know when things will settle down? When you die, things will settle way down. We don't live waiting on some other pace or something to happen in our lives because, because peace is not a pace to achieve. We're going to find out it's not a place to get. It's found in a person, and Jesus says it's coming. And the Spirit has come to us and to all who've received him. In Ephesians 5.25, Paul says, uh, hey, keep in step with the Spirit. I love that. You talk about pace. It's walking in him, guided by the Spirit every day, and that pace leads your life. I've said it often. Jesus was often busy. He was never in a hurry. There's a way to live whatever comes your way with a peace that surpasses your understanding. Jesus says, the Spirit comes in my name. What does that mean? According to his purpose, just like him. It's coming, and it's going to allow you to be lockstep with the triune God who now lives in you, who guides you and leads you. You see, again, don't tell me that God is silent if your Bible is closed. How does he speak to us? How does the Spirit speak? Through his word. How does Jesus remind us of all that he has said? How do you know? You know what he said through his word. He's given us the gift of scripture. And so peace comes not with a certain pace, but with a certain relationship with the person. And it is the Holy Spirit in our lives. Perfect peace comes to us when we fix our hearts on him. Isaiah 25 says he, has, he keeps in perfect peace. Those whose minds are stayed on him. Look at verse 27. Peace I leave with you, he says. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. See, the solution to your unrest, to your troubled heart, it's not a place. Watch this. It's not a place to be. It's a gift to receive. He says, I give you this peace. Peace is not found in a certain place. And some of you are wrestling with this right now. It's not found in that next job. It's not found when you arrived at that position or that promotion or making that much money. Whatever it is that you're looking for, his very spirit now lives in you. See, he gives a peace, watch this, that the world cannot give. Don't be afraid, whatever you're facing. Some of you saw the debate on Tuesday night. Maybe you watched about 10 minutes of it and said, I see where this is heading. And you, you know, bowed out. Maybe that happened. But um, you watched the debate, perhaps, on, on Channel 8. Uh, it was ABC on news. They, they, they asked the question, how do you feel about the future of America after tonight's debate? They had 4,000 respondents. 19% uh, were optimistic. <laughs> 3% were neutral. Almost 80%, 78% said uh, pessimistic. Future looks grim. Okay. If your hope and your peace is found in a person or in a political party or a politician or in a partisan stance, listen, Jesus says, "Turn, come to me. I've got a peace that comes that the world cannot give you. I have a peace that no one In any leadership position, no one in your life can give you. Only he can give you the peace that's found in him. And so he says, come to me. And he says, receive this peace. In Christ, we have nothing to worry about. Friend, you have nothing to worry about in him, nothing to fear. Peace, again, it's not found in a place, a position, or promotion. It's not found in a better place. It's not, how about this? It's not found in a better place in time. 
You know, a lot of people, hasn't that been the case for us? Let's just get out of 2020. Let's, I mean, how long have we been? Let's just get on to 21. I can't wait till this pandemic's behind us. Let's just move on. Peace will come when we get to 21. And you know, you know what's happened now? Uh, we've heard that now 2020 is going to become an adjective in the days ahead, right? It's like, um, man, everything in my life was going great, and then everything went 2020 on me all of a sudden. Um, you know, in years from now, officer, I was going around the, the corner. I was totally controlling my car. Suddenly, everything went 2020. And he's going, oh, wow, that's horrible. Right? Yeah, I know what you're talking about, right? We can't even see, hi- we can't even see hindsight is 2020 anymore. I mean, it's, it's like every, we're just wanting to get to another place. But watch this. This is the word for some of us. The calendar is not going to fix the chaos in your life. The calendar, a date on the calendar is not going to fix your problem. You may say, well, gosh, I hope that it will. No, no, no. A lot of us are here. Man, if I could just get to my, my senior year, you know, it'd be great. Or if I could just, if I could just get to college, I'd get out of the house, I, everything would be perfect. If I could just, some of it, if I could just get married, my life would be perfect. If I could just have kids, I'd be so happy. I'd be, everything would be perfect. I would, I would have so much peace if my kids would just grow up a little bit. When they are not this age anymore, and all the while, parents, you're missing the moment, wishing it away. If my kids could just get in middle school, yeah, there, there's peace there. <laughs> or, you know, from the middle school, if I get them into high school, uh, they get their license, a lot of peace there. You see, they get out of, ha- out of the house ha- on their own. Oh, my gosh. We always are waiting for another time, another place. Peace doesn't come from a date on the calendar. In this world, you will have trouble. And Jesus is saying, you're going to have more trouble. You need a peace that is not based on your circumstances. I have overcome the world, he says. Peace is found in a relationship with him. Begs two questions. How does he do this? And what does that have to do with me, really? I mean, if we were, a lot of us wrestle with this. Only Jesus can give peace, and he says, it's my peace. Notice that. He says, my peace I give to you. Listen, friends, I don't want a temporary peace. I don't want the peace that the world gives. He, what did he's talking about? I don't want a plastic peace. I don't want a manufactured peace. I want a peace that comes from God that cannot be taken away. I've got troubles in my life. I've got more troubles that are coming. But there's a peace that surpasses all of that. Look at what he says in verse 28. You heard me say to you, I'm going away, and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. He's saying he's going to go. He's promising the Spirit to come, and the Spirit has come. But look at what he says. How sad is this? If we put ourselves in the position of the apostles, I'm going away. He's saying goodbye. I mean, their master, their guide, their leader, their friend, their hope is saying, I'm, I'm going to be gone. This is, I mean, pa- God, goodbyes are always painful, right? Let me ask you this. What pain or struggle are you facing right now in your life? For some of us, that pain is creating a great sense of anxiety. It's a barrier to peace. And if you have chronic pain, it's, it is a barrier to peace can be. What, what are you facing right now? Or what grief are you facing right now? We've lost so much during this time. And I've walked with families who've lost so much and lost loved ones. And, and, and it's so painful during this season, struggling with hope, struggling to say, what is it? This, if this thing will not go away, some of us are caught in habitual pain, unending grief, And it feels like it'll never go away. The solution, I've got to say this, listen, the solution to your sadness, your unrest, your lack of peace is not a pain to erase, but a promise to embrace. Jesus said the spirit is coming and it's my spirit that's coming. The Holy Spirit is coming to reside in you and he's nearer to you than your own heartbeat, friends, this morning. He's nearer to you than your own skin. He is with you every day. He's a person who who is guiding you and driving you. Look at what it says in verse 29. And now I've told you before it takes, uh, before it takes place. He's saying, I'm telling you now so that when it does take place, you may believe. 
And when the Spirit comes, you'll know that I've said it. And listen, the Spirit has come. Now it's happened. We look back and say, he was right. The Spirit comes in Acts 2. The Spirit comes upon the people bringing power to us when we receive his grace and receive his forgiveness by faith. He lives in us. And now the power of the Holy Spirit lives inside of you to give you strength and guidance in everything that you face. Look at this next one. Not a problem to solve, but a presence to enjoy. He says, hey, if you believe, notice it's a person again. This is not some you know, Star Wars force. This is not a magical vibe. It's not a good feeling. This is the presence of a person. You know, when I think about presence of people that I love, it, it's, a, it's a presence to enjoy is what the Holy Spirit is. When I think about Stacy, you know, being around people I love. When I think about you, when I think about family, when I think about people I love, I'm like, man, I just, I love, I enjoy their presence. It, 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 it's contagious. It makes me feel like I've got some peace in my life. You know people like that. The Holy Spirit is that. He's always with you. Always with you. But I want you to notice this. Peace is not an achievement. Peace is not an achievement. It's a relationship with the Prince of Peace. And so we find it as we walk with him. This is what Jesus is saying. We say this often about purity. Purity is not an achievement. Purity is a relationship with the pure one who makes us pure, right? We say this about righteousness. Righteousness is not an achievement. It's a relationship with the one who is righteous, who's made us righteous. Peace is the same way. His peace is the presence of his, his, his life in us that we enjoy even through difficult times. Look at verse 30. I will, not, I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has no claim on me. Now here's what's happening. They're coming to arrest Jesus, literally. And, but he's saying that, that they're coming to arrest me but the evil one is behind this. The evil one is coming after me. Satan is, is seeking to take him down. Satan's seeking to take you down. Friends, we have an enemy. Let me ask you, what is coming at you in these days? And then behind that, who is coming at you? Be careful not to personify this in people around your life. See, here's the thing. For many of us, our problem, we think, man, if I could fix that problem. Think about Jesus. He could fix Pilate. You talk about somebody who fixed something. He could fix the situation, and he doesn't. He doesn't fix it. He doesn't fix everybody around it. Why not? Because he knows that the Father has a plan and he's at work so that he can display his love to the world. Many of us think, if I could fix that person, then my life would be okay. This person makes me crazy. Some of you thought about a person creating stress in your life. Well, be real careful. You know, somebody sitting right next to you. I, I don't know. But it could be. But, but here's what happens is that we think that, man, if I could just fix this person and we blame all of our, our unrest and anxiety and worry on that person as if they have that kind of power over you. Listen, your peace or lack of peace is not a person to fix, but a grace to embrace. And here's what I mean. Peace comes from the one who's overcome evil. And now we, too, can Extend grace to others who are kind of making us crazy. All right? Now, it's not to say we don't challenge people. But look, some of us think, if I could just fix that person, how's that going for you, by the way? How's it going to fix that person or, or, or maybe a spouse you've been married to for a long time or a friend or somebody in your family? Or if I could just fix that child, how's that going for you? You see, we need to pray and we need to extend grace. It's going to be love that motivates people as we seek to guide them. But you need to release people because there's a greater plan and opportunity for you to express the love of God. Stop trying to fix everyone in your life and extend grace instead. That's a word for some of us. Look at verse 31. But I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. Now notice, first of all, Jesus, his obedience signifies his love for the Father. That's how we express our love to him, right? We've said it. What was, you know, what's the quick answer to all that we experience? The challenges of this world is sin. And here's the thing. For some of us, the unrest, the barrier to peace is our sin. For some of us, the great challenges in our life, the lack of peace is directly related to our disobedience. This is not always the case, but 
It's why the Bible says in Isaiah 48, 22, there's no peace for the wicked. If we're not following the Lord, how about this? He commands us to turn to him. He gives us peace. If you don't do that, you're being disobedient. And you continue to experience this unrest in your life, right? See, our sin and, and his righteousness is like water and oil. They do not mix. And, and, but Christ has come. I love this in Psalm 85, verse 10. Love and faithfulness meet each other. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Righteousness and peace. You've heard this. No justice, no peace. We've heard that a lot in recent days. It's true in our relationship with God, too. No justice, no peace between you and God. If there's no righteousness, that's another word for justice in the Bible, there's no peace. So Christ has come, watch this, to bridge the gap. Friends, if you're watching me right now online, you need to hear this. If you don't know the Lord, maybe you're in the room, you don't have a righteousness that gets you to God. Christ comes as your substitute so that there is justice to be paid, but you don't have to pay it. Instead, Christ took it upon himself. Look at, look at Ephesians 2, 14. For he himself is our peace. He is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances. What is all this about? He's saying that he's come to bring peace, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two. He's talking about bringing people together even, bringing us to God, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. How can we live in peace? What he's saying is this. Listen, Jesus brings peace to your past by taking on your sin. All of your sins are forgiven by him if you receive his grace by faith. He gives peace with your present. How does he do this? He gives you peace between you and God first. He gives you peace with others by giving you peace in yourself. You'll never have peace with others until you have peace within yourself. And then finally, he gives peace with your future. Your future is secure. Friends, listen, you don't need to worry about anything in the future if you find yourself in him. So watch this as I close. Peace is not a pace to achieve. It's a person to believe. It's not a place to be, but a gift to receive. It's not a pain to erase, but a promise to embrace. It's not a problem to solve, but a presence to enjoy. And it's not a person to fix. It's a grace to embrace. In the end, peace is found in a person. And his name is Jesus. And you will experience that peace that surpasses understanding. Now, here's what I want us to do. I want us to go back to how I kind of started this message. I want you to just close your eyes right where you are. Again, you don't need to be nervous. Just close your eyes. And even at home, just get focused. I want you to think about that thing that's been creating and is creating some tension, some unrest in your life right now. I want you to do this for me again. Just put, put your hand up again with eyes closed and nobody looking around. You're just, you're just showing God. Here I am. Put your hand up. I want you to give him that number again. Whatever it was earlier. From a one to five, whatever it was. I want you to just put that number, whatever it is, I want, I want you to bring it down. You got a fist. You bring that number down. And know that he has a hold on you. Whatever it is, he brings peace into that situation. His presence brings peace. His presence brings peace. Praise him for it. Thank him for it. With our heads just bowed now, eyes closed, you can put your hand down. I just want to challenge you. Anyone watching me right now who's never received this peace, you say, Jeff, I just, I want this peace. Friends, it starts between you and God. It starts by receiving Christ who's bridged the gap for you so that you might know his peace from the inside out. And so, Lord, I give you my life. I receive your grace. I respond with obedience as I seek to love you now with my life as you have first loved me. I give you my life. Whatever comes my way, I say yes to you. Yes 
I will. You never fail. I give you my life in Jesus' name. Amen.